office of the Always Believe House. Oh, today we're going to continue learning to do exponents. Please, please remember what we are doing right now. One of the hardest things you'll do in algebra. This is all brand new. So when we do these problems, you've never done anything like this before. You've never written down answers like this before. So keep going. If you have trouble, message your teacher. They'll help you out, okay? So let's get rocking and rolling. Oh, oh, oh. And a magical whiteboard appears. And let's start getting these problems done. Okay, before we start doing the problems, I'm going to review you a little bit. So at the top of your paper you have right here, write down 7 over 3, or 7 to the 3rd over 7 to the 5th. Okay, so at the top of your paper, write down 7 to the 3rd over 7 to the 5th. Remember, doing this the long way, you would write 3 7s on top and 5 7s on bottom. You could cancel out 3 sets of 7s, and you would have 1 over 7 times 7, which is 1 over 49, right? Okay, so 7 to the 3rd over 7 to the 5th is going to be 1 over 49. You learned also last week that you can subtract the numerator and the denominator. When you divide bases with exponents, you subtract the exponents. So 3 minus 5 is a negative 2. 7 to the negative 2 is the same as this. Basically what happens, when you have a number without a fraction, technically it's over 1. That 7 to the negative 2 is telling you that the two 7s should not be on the top of the fraction. They should be on the bottom. So the 7 squared is 49, but the 49 is not in the numerator. It's in the denominator. The negative exponent does not make the answer negative. It means the base is in the wrong part of the fraction. So whenever you move the base across the fraction bar, the sign of the exponent will flip. Whenever you move the base across the fraction bar, the sign of the exponent will flip. For instance, write down x to the third over y to the negative 5. Now then, let's flip the fraction. When I do this, if I were to move the y to the top, the negative exponent would turn positive, but when I move the x to the bottom, the positive exponent would turn negative. So whenever you move a base across the fraction bar, the sign of the exponent flips. That's where the negative exponent comes from. The negative exponent is telling you that that base is in the wrong part of the fraction. Let's go to the next one. 5 to the negative 2. Type this into the calculator. It is not negative, is it? So if I were to go to a calculator and hit 5, then hit the caret button, which is all the way to the left of the 4, then type in negative 2, I'm going to get 1 over 25. 5 to the second power is 25, but the 25 should not be in the numerator. It should be in the denominator. There's two ways to answer that. You could just say 1 over 25, or you could put 1 over 5 squared, which is still going to be 1 over 25 in it. Okay? So hopefully this is clicking. That negative exponent does not make the answer negative. It moves the base across the fraction bar. Now then, let's look at this one. This is going to drive y'all nuts, okay? Negative 5 to the negative 2. Most of y'all are thinking this is negative 5 times negative 5, which is a positive 25. Let's do this on the calculator. Okay, so I'm going to get the calculator. I'm going to hit negative 5, caret, negative 2. Remember, 5 to the negative 2 is 1 over 25. Let's see what the answer is. It's not positive, it's negative in it. Notice also the calculator is putting the negative in the numerator. Technically, it should be to the middle in the, in, to the middle of the fraction. Okay, and I'll show you this in a minute. So technically, what happens here? The negative does not get the exponent because it's not in parentheses. So this negative is dropping, and then you're putting one over five squared, which is going to be negative one over twenty-five. Okay. That is very confusing. The negative does not get the does not get the exponent unless it's in parentheses. Now then, let's do this one. Parentheses, negative 5, close parentheses, caret, negative 2. So I have negative 5 in parentheses raised to the negative 25. That means the negative 5 is going to be written down twice, including the negative, 
but it should not be in the numerator, it should be in the denominator. This should also be a positive 1 over 25, and that's what the calculator is getting. Very, very important. In these problems, the calculator will do the number, but they will not do the variables. So you can take the variables out, type in the number of the calculator, and the calculator will give you the answer. Okay, so on this problem here, what's happening is we're writing 1 over negative 5 to the second power. And then that would turn into 1 over negative 5 times negative 5, which would be 1 over 25. Ho, 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 ho. Let's go to one more. 1 over x to the negative 4. The x has a negative exponent. That means the base is in the wrong part of the fraction. So if I were to take the x and move it to the top, this would turn into the x to the fourth over 1. So whenever you take a base and move it across the fraction bar, the sign of the exponent switches. And one last one, let's do this. 2 over 3 to the negative 2 power. Now then, hopefully you all know 2 squared is 4 and 3 squared is 9. So somehow, someway, we're going to get 4 and 9 in this answer. But let's look at what the answer is. So go to your calculator, hit parentheses, control divide. Now then, 2 down 3. Hit the right arrow button to get out of the fraction. Close the parentheses. Carrot, negative 2. So I have 2 thirds to the negative 2. I'm going to hit enter. And notice I get 4 and 9 in my answer, but the 2 thirds has flipped in it. Okay, so the 2 should not be in the numerator, it should be in the denominator, and the 3 should go from the denominator to the numerator. Technically, this is what happens. If you have a fraction to a negative exponent, if you flip the fraction, the exponent will change to a positive. So this is going to be 3 times 3 is 9, and 2 times 2 is 4, right? So a negative exponent raised to a, a fraction raised to a negative exponent will flip the fraction and the exponent will change to a positive. That's, that's an important concept. Remember, you've never done this before. So you need repetition to get this down and message your teacher if you need help making sure your answers are correct. Okay, now then let's go through and do some of these. I'm not going to do all of them for you because I don't want to take all your Oreo cookies away. And also remember, anything to the zero power is one. Anything to the zero power is 1. Okay, so let's start off with number 8. Remember, anything to the zero power is 1, but this negative is going to drop. And then this right here will turn to 1. If I were you and you had a zero power, scratch out what that zero power is to and put a 1. So that 8x is going to turn to a 1, and the answer will just be negative 1. Okay. Then let's go to number 7, or let's do number 8, 6. Okay, on number 6, remember, these bases have a 1 power. You want to get rid of all the parentheses first. Get rid of all the parentheses first, then you're either going to add or subtract your exponents. So to get rid of the parentheses, we're going to multiply. This 1 third should go to these two exponents. So I'll have x to the 1 third b to the one-third, and I'm just going to put times b to the one-half. Notice I have two b's, don't I? So I'm going to have a to the one-third, and then b, and then I'm going to write real small one-third plus one-half. I need to punch this in on the calculator. If you cannot do this in your brain, punch it in on the calculator. You're going to have to use the calculator to get these. One-third plus one-half is five-six, so this right here would be my answer. Make sure when you're using your exponent rules, and there's fractions, you could use the calculator to generate those answers. Okay, let's go to number 7. Okay, on number 7, this is kind of simple because there's no negatives in here. Remember, your 5 and your 20 have an exponent of 1. And this 4 is going to get distributed. Now then, I'm going to show you a secret here, okay? The long way to do this problem would be this. 5 to the 1 times 4, x to the 2 times 4, over 20 to the 1 times 4, and then x to the 3 times 4. Everyone with me? So I'm taking all those exponents and multiplying them by 4. Now then, I'm going to show you something you can do real quick. If you were to take the x out of the problem, 
you would have 5 over 20 to the fourth power. Let's plug that into the calculator. So parentheses, control divide, and then hit 5 down 20, close the parentheses, caret 4, making sure that's right. Hold on. I did not type that in right. I need to hit the right arrow button first, then close the parentheses. Make sure that's to the fourth power it is. So 5 over 20 to the fourth power is what I need to type in. So caret 4. So I have 5 over 20 to the fourth power. This is going to give me my number. After this, I just have to worry about the X and the Y. So if I were to hit enter, I would get 1 over 256. That's what my number is going to end up being. So let's go back to the problem. I'm going to take this off, and then I know that this is going to turn into 1 over 256. Now then, let's do the X's. So 2 times 4 is 8, and 3 times 4 is 12. So I have this, don't I? Now then, where are you going to do this next? Okay, write down 1 over 256, put the X, and then write down 8 minus 12. This is going to turn into 1 over 25, x to the negative 4, which means the x's should not be in the numerator. They should be in the denominator. So my answer is 1 over 25, x to the 4th. Another way you could do this, look at your denominators here. I have 12 x's on bottom. I have 8 x's on top. I could go straight down to here and type this, or 256, x to the 12, Jiminy Crickets x to the 12 minus 8. That would give me a positive 4, wouldn't it? Okay? So if you go where the biggest denominator is and subtract, you'll get a positive exponent, okay? Either way, you'll end up with 1 over 25 x to the 4th. Okay? Your math books are assuming you're doing this. You're subtracting the numerator minus the denominator. Okay? So make sure that is clear when you do these problems. Okay, let's do, I'm going to do one per row. Let's do number uh, 11. First off, look at number 10. Do you all see that you have a zero power? What you should do right here is scratch that out and all of this turns into one. Also, these star buttons are ones. So when you see that star on there, that's multiply. And right here, I'm just going to start you off. You're going to do 4 to the 1 times 3, x to the 4 times 3, y to the negative 4 times 3, and then times the 1. I'm not going to finish that for you. Let's go to number 11, though. Now then, on number 11, I'm going to show you a trick here. If you were to take out the A's, you would have this, wouldn't you? So on the calculator, I'm going to punch parentheses negative 7 over 3 to the negative 4. If you punch that into the calculator, the answer will be your number. Then you could work with your letters. So let's type this into the calculator. So negative 7 over 3 to the negative 4. So I'm going to hit parentheses, control divide, and then 7 down 3. Ah, too many crickets. 7 down 3. Hit the right arrow button to get out of the fraction. Parentheses, caret, negative 4, right? 7 over 3 to the negative 4. 7, neg and I need the negative in there. I didn't get the negative. So let me go to here, get my negative in there. So I have it now, okay? So negative 7 over 3 to the negative 4. If you don't punch it in the calculator, it's not going to give you the answer. So this is the numbers that are in the problem. I'm not putting the letters in here because the calculator won't do the letters. Now then hit enter, and notice that it fl it's going to flip. So we just did 3 to the 4th over 7 to the 4th. And since the negative counts four times, it's positive. Four negatives, when you multiply, makes a positive. If this exponent would have been three, the answer would have been negative. So I know that my number is 81 over 2401. So I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to take this off, and then I should just go straight down to this, 81 over 2401. Now then, I'm going to multiply my a's by negative four. So I'm going to have a to the negative eight, and a to the negative 12. Now then, technically, you're going to do a to the negative 8 minus negative 12. Okay, negative 8 minus 12, negative 12, if you need to, punch this into the calculator. That's going to be a to the 4th. 
So this is going to turn into 81 a to the fourth over 2401, and that's the answer. Because the a's on the bottom are going to cancel out or divide out to 1. That's the answer to the problem. Another way you could have done this. Okay, do you see that you had a negative exponent? You could have done this. You could have wrote down the problem. I would suggest you to do this. Change the exponent to positive and then flip the fraction. This would give you the same answer. Notice that you got rid of the negative exponent, didn't you? 3 to the 4th would be 81. Then the 4 negatives would be a positive. 7 to the 4th is 2401. Then you would have 8 to the 12 over 8 to the 8th, which would end up being 8 to the 4. So if you flip the fraction, if you, have, if you have this, I would go ahead and flip that whole fraction and make the outside exponent positive, then do the math. It's a little bit simpler to do. F-U-N, fun, fun, fun. And I'm going to do one more problem with you. Let's do number 14 because I've seen this in your papers before. Write down A equals pi R squared. This is my radius. So I'm going to replace it. Y'all have never done this before. It's confusing. I'm replacing that radius with this. Okay, so this exponent of 2 is going to go here, here, and here. So I'm going to have a equals pi, 6 to the second power is 36, x to the 18, y to the 10, and technically your number should go first. So it's going to be 36 pi x18 y10. That answer matches up to b, doesn't it? Okay, that's how they're getting that answer. Y'all haven't done that before, and it's kind of confusing, okay? And then lastly, I'm going to help you out on this one. Okay, your exponents, all they want to know what, is what you're going to do to your exponents. Basically, you're going to take Z, you're going to add up the A and the B, and then subtract the C, aren't you? Okay, so look at your answer choices. You're adding the two exponents at the top, and then you're taking away the C. They basically want to know if you know how to do those rules, okay? Remember, message your teacher if you need help. This is not easy, okay? We're staying all week on this, so we're going to be repeating this. You're going to get this down. It takes repetition, especially when you throw all this together. It is not easy to do. Remember, you are amazing. You are created to do wonderful things, and you are awesome.